We're going to begin. Uh, I'm Carla Javits, president of the Marion B. and Jacob K. Javits Foundation. And we are uh, thrilled that you are all here today to celebrate the second annual Javits Prize for Bipartisan Leadership. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, on behalf of our family, the board of directors of the, Mar of the Marion B. and Jacob K. Javits Foundation, my brother jo uh, Josh, my sister Joy, uh, and our board member and treasured friend Jeffrey Kyle, who are here today, and our outstanding partners at Results for America. And we're going to just uh, leap right in now because we have some very busy members of Congress with us who we are honoring, really thrilled to honor today. So thank you so much for being with us. And my brother will be introducing the reason for the prize to both of you. Again, thank you so much for, uh, for being here. This year, we are very pleased to honor three individuals with the Legislative Partnership Award, Representative Diana DeGette, uh, Representative Fred Upton, and former Vice President Joe Biden. Uh, each played a very key role in passing the bipartisan 21st Century Cures Act. Uh, the prize is named for my father, Senator uh, from New York for 24 years, uh, who really saw uh, legislating as problem solving uh, and had very little tolerance for those who, uh, who just wanted to stifle and thwart the opposing party. Uh, he didn't demonize his opponents, never oversimplified things, and really became a master of the intricacies of legislation, which is exactly what our award winners have done uh, in this legislation and in their careers. So we're thrilled to have them. The 21st Century Cures Act, which was passed in late 2016, boosted funding for medical research, eased the development and approval of experimental treatments, made sweeping regulatory changes in medical research systems, and reformed federal policy on mental health care. In order to pass the legislation of this kind of caliber, uh, members of Congress from both parties had to work together well. Uh, so we're very pleased to honor them tonight. Uh, first, uh, Representative Diana DeGette is a fourth-generation Coloradan. Uh, did I pronounce that right? Very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Serving her 11th term in the House of Representatives. Before Congress, she served two terms in the Colorado House of Representatives and founded a law practice in Denver focusing on civil rights and employment litigation. Her husband, uh, Lino Lipinski, is also here tonight and has another connection with us, and that is he was an intern uh, in my father's office in the 1970s. So we're thrilled to have him as well. Uh, we are also honoring uh, Representative Fred Upton, who served in the 6th District of Michigan House of Representatives since 1987. Uh, and prior to Congress, he served on the congressional st uh, staff of, uh, of U.S. Congressman David Stockton a very demanding boss, I, uh, I would understand him to be, and uh, served in the Office of Management and Budget under President Ronald Reagan. Thrilled to have them here today and, and to, to accept this uh, award of the Jacob J. Javits Bipartisanship Prize, uh, uh, which we, we're honoring our father, and you have honored his, his memory and his beliefs and his legacy in bipartisanship and getting things done and, and problem solving and and doing it the, uh, the right way. Uh, I'm pleased to have you, and, and congratulations. Um, uh, yeah, Congressman DeGette. De that's nothing. Well, good evening. I'm Bruce Reed. I'm I had the pleasure of uh, serving as Joe Biden's chief of staff in the White House for um, for three years, and um, and the uh, double pleasure of also being an intern um, in the United States Senate in 1980. Uh, Senator Javits, last year, I was interning for uh, Senator Frank Church at the time. They uh, uh, together ran the Senate Foreign Relations Committee at, at the time, um, and I've always uh, counted my blessings that I got to see the Senate. I did. 
um, I, that I got to see the Senate um, uh, at its peak. Um, and we all can hope that it achieves those heights again. Um, so congratulations to you both on this award and on the remarkable um, uh, legislative achievement that led to it. Uh, you were the two of you were able to push through the 21st Century Cures Act uh, just weeks after one of the most divisive uh, presidential elections that we've had. Um, how did you do it? Thank you so much. We, we're not going to tell all of our secrets. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, um, Fred and I worked on, we did something that's really radical in Washington right now. We actually uh, identified a problem. And then we took input from every different group we could think of, um, from patients themselves, from researchers, from pharmaceutical companies, from angel investors, even from the administration, <laughs> as you know. And we, um, we spent, and we had field hearings, and we had white papers, and we had round tables, and we had uh, regular hearings. We worked on it for three years. And so um, I, think, I think what happened was, and, and, and everything we did was as a result of trying to, um, trying to solve a problem in a very robust and fundamental way. We didn't want to just have the 21st Century Cures Act one page of pablum. We really wanted to, to have serious reform. And, so, ha and, and we also worked across the aisle, of course, and we worked with the Senate uh, as well as the agencies. So we had a lot of consensus as we went through the process. And, and um, I would say, and I think, uh, and I'll turn it over to Fred, but when we had the election, it just added more urgency to our effort to actually get it on President Obama's desk and signed because um, everybody knew, irrespective of whether they were Democrat or Republican, that there was going to be a lot of, of um, uncertainty and change in the new administration. And we just, we just refused to say no. I mean, I can, I, you know, it was a three-year effort. We listened to everyone that we could find, <laughs> including our spouses, who are both here today, which <laughs> is great. We had each had brilliant staffs, um, and they worked together. I mean, they really worked together. But I got to tell you, um, the vice president was great. Joe was great. Uh, and to his credit, we met with him early, and he knew his stuff. And we had what was supposed to be a 30-minute meeting last an hour and a half at the old executive office building. <laughs> and he had his key staff, and he said he'd help. And we kept reminding his staff, and we kept reminding him. But, you know, he was really something else. But we had two great partners over here in the Senate. I mean, Rod, Rob Portman's always been in. I know he's getting an, an award, too, and he's a, a very close friend. But I got to tell you, Lamar Alexander and Patty Murray, uh, they were top-notch. They let us have the full leash to do what we could, along with the leadership, Mitch McConnell, uh, to really try and get it done. And, you know, we needed every legislative day. I got to tell you that on Thanksgiving weekend, so was a couple weeks after the election, we had maybe seven or eight legislative days left. We knew that that was all that it was going to be, and there were a lot of things like the CR and other things that were hanging in the bands, but... I can remember calling Diana in Colorado, and she was talking to Nancy Pelosi, and I was talking to Paul Ryan, and, you know, what did we need to do to get it done in the last couple legislative days? And uh, we learned when each other's turkey was going in the oven <laughs> and the dressing and what's going on and, you know, how are we going to make calls to get it. We had a couple conference calls even on, on Thanksgiving Day, but the proof was in the pudding. 392 to 26 in the House and 94 to 5 in the Senate. And we had to survive a cloture vote that I got to say was rough because uh, when you lose cloture, it's done. And, uh, you know, it was uh, not 94 to 5 <laughs> on the cloture vote. It was a little nip and tuck, but, you know, at the end we made it. But, you know, we didn't make it for ourselves. We made it for everybody in the country. Millions of people that are going to have a cure 
for these diseases that we all care about, whether it be Alzheimer's or cancer or ALS, you name it, lupus, we're going to have the cures in the, in the years ahead because of what we did. And that's what drove us to get it done. And why do you think that uh, that kind of achievement isn't contagious? I would think that if I were a member of Congress and I saw the two of you and your colleagues uh, signing into law a magnificent uh, piece of legislation that's going to save hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of lives, uh, uh, why is it so hard to get people to work together on causes like this? Well, it wasn't, you know, even though it was hard to get this thing done, I mean, the proof was in the pudding with that vote, 392 to 26. But it's something that I demanded. When I became chairman of Energy and Commerce, I changed the rules of our, our committee, and they're still there. That is, if you have a bipartisan amendment, it goes first. It goes ahead of the queue. And I've encouraged members to talk to each other uh, with amendments and bills and you know, that story often doesn't get written, and, but, you know, we did pipeline safety. I want to say we passed it with 400 votes uh, in the House. It was the Upton Dingle bill, John Dingle. Uh, we did a lot of things, but the press doesn't always like to cover that. But, I mean, and, you know, we have our issues. We know that we do uh, between our two sides, and you got to get around that, and you got to find an area where you can agree, uh, and not agree to disagree, but agree. That's what we both came here for. I got to say that when I was elected, I never thought I would be, A, on the Energy and Commerce Committee, the most important committee. Sorry, anyone else. Uh, I know Ways and Means thinks they got their elbows on the table this week and maybe this week. But, you know, I never thought I'd be on the committee, let alone chair a subcommittee, let alone be in the majority, let alone chair the full committee and get something like this done. Um, but it happened because of the relationships uh, that – you know, particularly Diana and I have been close. She came to my district. I came to hers. Uh, we know our staff. We probably know each other's birthdays. Um, we certainly know our sp the spouses uh, and, the, and the strong role that they play. But the quality of staff that we have and having being able to network. So I guess I, w I should add one brief thing here, too. So Ken Duberstein was my boss when I worked at the White House. We had a Republican president, Reagan, and we had a Democratic Congress. And yet, President Reagan was probably one of the most popular presidents ever, winning 49 states in his reelection. But it was because of the relationship that the president had with Capitol Hill to get things done. And I learned all, really, all of my legislative background was having Ken Duberstein be my boss, who headed congressional affairs before he became chief of staff uh, to the president. And having that trust and relationship, your word is your bond, and your hard work, and seeing that pot at the end of the rainbow in terms of what you wanted to accomplish. Diana DeGette was a great partner for me. Together, we could not be beaten. Uh, we couldn't be. And literally, we had <laughs> we each had physical confrontations with our respective sides <laughs> to get this done. I can assure you, I knew it from my, I watched a mean and deliberate Diana to get really shake some people up to get it done. And without that, we couldn't have got it done. But it, we were driven because of the cause. Let, let me just add um, that that I, I would argue that there there is more bipartisanship in Washington than people realize, but that these are the things that don't get any attention. Um, our committee under Fred's leadership, we didn't just pass 21st Century Cures. We passed um, the Toxic Substances Control Act. We, we um, did a whole rewrite of that bill. That bill, uh, it was one of the most intransigent, intransigent problems that Congress had from the moment it was passed it was supposed to be one of the crown jewels of the environmental bills, but from the very moment it was passed, it was it never worked. And the reason is because the EPA was supposed to categorize chemicals to see which ones would be more um, more closely regulated than others. 
the business community hated it and the environmental community hated it. That was an achievement in and of <laughs> itself. And, and Congress tried for many, many years to fix Tosca. Finally, last year, we were able to fix Tosca in a bipartisan way. This year... First time in 40 years. In 40, 40 years. years. This year, we were able to um, get some bipartisan agreement on something that has really been difficult, and that's what do we do about storage of high-level nuclear waste? What do we do about Yucca Mountain? And so we have had some things... 49 to 4 in committee. Right. Be on the House floor soon. We have had some really um, important milestones in bipartisanship, but unfortunately, as Fred said, the press does not cover that. And so what you see, I I and, and what I think is, what you see in the press is uh, if you all, for example, on the reauthorization of the CHIP bill, the Children's Health Insurance bill, uh, we were unable to come to an agreement on how to offset it, although I would argue, and I think Fred would agree, if they put the two of us in charge of the offset, we would have been able to, <laughs> to do it. I'm not kidding when I say that. But, but um, or, or the um, Affordable Care Act, uh, what, and, and now, of course, the tax bill. I think that reasonable minds could sit down together and work on these issues. But unfortunately, number one, the partisan extremes out there in the, in the country are demanding purity from a lot of members of Congress. And secondly, the press doesn't reward bipartisanship. I'll just finish with this. Um, Fred and I, as I said, we worked on this bill for three years. And, and I did get a lot of press in Denver, but two weeks ago I had a town hall meeting in my district. And there were 250 people at this town hall meeting. And um, someone said, Congresswoman, don't you work on anything in a bipartisan way? <laughs> so I said, well, as a matter <laughs> of fact, and, and I told them about 21st Century Cures, and I said, how many of you knew about this bill before today? And four people raised their hands. So, you know, there's just no incentive. And, and I think this is something that reasonable people on both sides of the aisle need to talk about how we bridge this, because I think it's a terrible problem in politics. The reward system is geared towards t partisanship, and, p and people who work in a bipartisan way, you know, we feel happy about the bill, and we feel satisfied for the reasons that Fred said, because we think we're going to cure disease. But you don't get brownie points in the partisan political system for that right now. Let me just say one other thing. You know, Diana said we listen to everybody from investors to the NIH to the FDA to disease groups. I mean, just anyone that wanted to offer something for us to hear, we, we did want to hear and we wanted to react. Uh, and I also listen to, to Democrats, something that's not always done uh, and that we need more of, which is why this award is, is so, uh, uh, so great to re for me to, to receive. But I can remember Diana coming in. We're in a markup, and Diana came and said, Fred, you know, we got people don't quite understand this. I know you've set up the mark. We're halfway through it. We thought we were halfway through it. Can you, like, adjourn for, like, take a recess for, like, a day or so and just so that we can get our ducks in line? Because for us to get this thing done, we need a big vote in the House to push the Senate to do it. We're going to add, we added mental health to this, another thing that's pretty important. And so I did some, we, we recessed for 24 hours. And we went, <laughs> I mean, some of my crew said, don't do that. You know, we got them. No, no, no. I said, no, 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 no. We need this to get 45 or 50 votes. We, we needed it, it to get the Democrats. Yeah. That's why. No, no. And you know what? At the end, and I can remember walking out down the steps, uh, the House steps, and you know, I'm talking to Diana and Frank Pallone, and they're trying to t reach another member. And I see the other member, and all of a sudden, he's on his phone, and he's talking to Diana on this phone. We're walking out and stuff. I said, maybe I should walk a different way. But, you know, instead of getting, you know, 40 votes, we ended it was 51 to nothing. Had we done the markup the day before and actually finished it, brought the gavel, it would have been 30 to 20. It would not have sent the signal to my leadership or others that this is something that's better than sliced bread. And 51 to nothing was a signal that helped us to then get it done 
and then get the margin in the Senate to get it to the president's desk literally on the last day of the legislative year as he signed it on December 13th, 2016. Well, I know you both have more uh, legislative miracles to accomplish. Uh, so uh, thanks again to the Javits Foundation for changing the reward system and providing uh, uh, this award for your work. And congratulations on all And we want to see the Biden video, <laughs> right? Is that going to be up Can next? Can I just add my thanks to the Biden family and the Biden Foundation? I'm sorry, the Javits family the <laughs> and the Javits Foundation and to Vice President Joe Biden, who did an extraordinary job of pulling things together for us. Yep, it's very important to see. It's great. Well, Thank you. I think you. the quality of character and the values that you both display inspire us. I think it's a time when we need inspiration, people in the Congress who really are trying to get things done and um, really care about this country and uh, can rise above to make things happen. So you really exemplify that, and it's it's an honor and a thrill to uh, to give you this prize today. So please join me in congratulating you. Okay, we're going to reconvene. Senator Collins is here, and Senator Portman. We are thrilled to say. Uh, so if you can reconvene here. Um, we are uh, really uh, deeply, deeply honored that uh, both Senator Collins and Senator Portman are here. Senator Collins received the very inaugural uh, Javits Prize for bipartisan leadership last year, and I think uh, an incredible exemplar of the courageous uh, way that she has uh, conducted herself in the Congress. Our board member, Jeffrey Kyle, is going to introduce Senator Collins, who's going to make a few remarks with us today. Thank you, Carla, and welcome. Many years ago, I became intrigued with Washington and how it worked. That was uh, largely due to Marion and Jack Javits, who introduced me to this city. One memorable visit with Marion included, incredibly, lunch in the Senate with John McCain, tea after that with Barbara Bush at the White House, followed by dinner with Justice Scalia. <laughs> Three branches in one day, what an education. <laughs> Only Marion could have done that. Uh, later, um, it was Josh Javits, along with his sisters, Carla and Joy, who conceived and created the Jacob K. Javits Prize for Bipartisan Leadership. The first recipient of that prize was the great, brave, trusted, and beloved senior United States Senator from Maine, Susan Collins. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Thank you very much, Jeff. The Javits Prize for Bipartisanship Le Leadership, Bipartisan Leadership, is a beacon to guide all who serve our nation and our people. For throughout his long and distinguished career, Senator Jacob Javits was a shining light. Last year, I was deeply honored to share the inaugural prize with Senators Tim Scott and Cory Booker. And I am delighted to congratulate this year's congressional awardees especially my friend and colleague, Senator Rob Portman. You can applaud him right now. <laughs> my congratulations also to Representatives Diana DeGette and Fred Upton, whom I understand had to leave to go vote, and to the fourth awardee, Vice President Joe Biden. All of them are fully deserving of this important recognition, and uh, I've had the pleasure of working with all of them. But let me say a few words about my friend, Senator Portman. He is a problem solver. He is focused on finding practical solutions and improving the lives of our citizens. He works across the aisle. He is one of those senators 
who is turned to by s both Democrats and Republicans because of his thoughtful approach to the issues and his extraordinary expertise. His work on addressing the opioid crisis led to the passage last year of significant legislation that he authored, and he had both Democrats and Republicans supporting his leadership, exactly the kind of work that the Javits Prize recognizes. He's also worked very hard as chairman of the Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations to end human trafficking. His work in this area hasn't received as much attention as it deserved, but he was responsible for shutting down a website that was a major source of human trafficking. His expertise on tax and budget issues is truly unsurpassed. All of us go to him with questions about the intricacies of budget issues and the tax code. And he always knows the answer. It's truly amazing. Vice President Biden and the two representatives have also demonstrated the spirit behind this award when they joined together to champion the 21st Century Cures Act. And I understand that earlier they talked about that, so I won't repeat what they did. But suffice it to say that it will make a difference to each and every family in our country. And the Vice President's commitment to the cancer moonshot, inspired by the tragic loss of his son, will lead to better treatments and cures. I don't have to tell this group that hyperpartisanship in Washington has prevented action on too many critical issues for far too long. Even in today's charged political environment, the leaders whom we recognize tonight are evidence that it is still possible to work in a bipartisan way in Washington, D.C., that it is still possible to find leaders like Rob Portman who understand that compromise does not mean betraying one's principles. Compromise is a means of finding common ground, of accomplishment, of understanding and respecting differences in order to find solutions. Let me just end by going back to Jacob Javits. In 1979, when I was 26, you can do the math now, <laughs> I was working for freshman Senator Bill Cohen. He had just been named to the Senate Governmental Affairs Committee and I was his minority staff director for one of the subcommittees. Senator Jake Javits was the ranking member on that committee. And I remember he was an extraordinary member of the committee. It was headed, actually was headed by Abe Rubikoff, Rubikoff rather, from Connecticut and Chuck Percy of Illinois. But Jake Javits outranked Chuck Percy. It was only one of those Senate seniority things that caused him not to be the ranking member. But he was so impressive. His intelligence and boundless curiosity combined with energy and preparation made him a great ally and a formidable opponent. And through her works, work on such issues as the arts and mental health, Marion Javits was an inspiring example of a committed, engaged citizen. Both of them made such a difference to our country. Now, I will confess to the Javits children who are here tonight that I was a little bit scared of your father. <laughs> But 
he <laughs> because he was so brilliant and he knew everything. Uh, but I learned so much just watching him and watching him forge all of these compromises on so many issues. The rancor and divisiveness that afflicts so much of our society today has made one truth abundantly clear. Unyielding adherence to an extreme position is easy. It is the compromising in good faith, the hard work of bringing people together that requires determination, intellect, and courage. And your honoree tonight, Rob Portman, has all of those qualities in abundance. So congratulations, Rob, on this well-deserved recognition. Thank you. Senator Collins, my father would have been thrilled to know all that you have done since your interaction with him. And we thank you for your powerful and articulate words. I only have a few more to add about Senator Portman. He has introduced 150 bipartisan bills during his first term. Reelected in uh, 2016 by winning 84 of the 88 counties in Ohio, United States Senator Rob Portman does not lack fiber. This is the man who had the courage to face a storm of abuse from fellow Republicans when in 2013 he broke ranks to come out in favor of the Defense of Marriage Act. Rob Portman has been a champion for underprivileged children, an advocate for policies that reduce poverty and increase opportunity and jobs. He has also been a leader on expanding exports, American energy, production, and strengthening our trade laws. Senator Portman said, the Regulatory Accountability Act is bipartisan legislation important to job creation. He said it is a bipartisan bill because it is a common ground bill, a middle ground bill. It's a great opportunity to break through the partisan gridlock and get something done. It's what the American people are looking for. Thank you, Senator Portman, for thinking carefully about the salient and controversial issues of our time and for joining with members from both sides of the aisle to bring assistance and justice for your constituents nationwide. The Marion B. and Jacob K. Javits Foundation honors you, Senator Portman, with the prize for bipartisan leadership lifetime achievement. Congratulations. going to walk out because I can't live up to these uh, wonderful introductions. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joy. And it is a great honor to be here with you and your family and to even, uh, you know, have the opportunity to be associated in any way with uh, Jake Javits and his remarkable 30-year career. Um, I told Carla this earlier, but the fact that he was in the minority for all but I think four years of his career, and yet his list of accomplishments is phenomenal. And to me, that's a wonderful model. Um, and I, I do hope that, as Susan Collins said so articulately, that you know we can get back to a time period where we're finding that middle ground and common ground, because we need it desperately. Um, so Josh, Joy, Carla, um, thank you very, very much. And I wish Diane and Fred were here. I want to congratulate them in person, but appreciate your acknowledging them too. And Senator Collins mentioned the 21st Century Cures Act, uh, hugely important legislation uh, across a, a number of different areas. Uh, part of it is, of course, cures, trying to find cures to some of our most 
difficult challenges, uh, diseases, uh, but also what it's done for the opioid crisis because it provides funding directly to our states that's being well used, I will tell you, in my state. Uh, so I, I congratulate you for choosing them as well. Jeff, when he introduced uh, Susan Collins, just said, uh, and here's this extraordinary woman, and you all applauded because, I mean, no one needs to talk about her accomplishments. Uh, they are so well known. And I will tell you, she, as you may know, flirted with the idea. Can you say flirt still, or is that, okay. <laughs> flirted with the idea of <laughs> running for governor. And uh, about three weeks ago, uh, I went up to her on the, on the floor and I said, Susan, you can't do this to us. <laughs> you know, it, it may be more fun to be governor. You get to make executive decisions and probably has a helicopter and that sort of stuff in Maine. <laughs> but uh, we cannot lose you right now. And honestly, she is a, a, a linchpin to the successes we do have in the Senate periodically. I mean, if you look underneath uh, these successes and sometimes behind the scenes, you see Susan Collins. Uh, she's the one who pulls people together and gets things done, and she has a lot of specific accomplishments as chair of you know, the aging committee and so on, uh, but it's, it's broader than that. It's just she sort of centers our conference uh, when we sometimes get a little off, off track. So thank you for being here, Susan, and your very kind words. I'm so glad that my wife Jane and my daughter Sally were here to hear you say those words because they would never have believed it. If I'd gone home and said, you wouldn't believe what Susan Collins said about me. <laughs> like, yeah, right, she couldn't have been that nice. Um, look, I, I, I will just echo some of the words that, that Susan said, really, but uh, do it in a less articulate way. I, I think we are at a point in our nation's history where we have to wonder about what is the definition of patriotism and public service. And it is easier, as Susan Collins said, to take a position on the right or the left. And that's partly a function of, uh, in terms of the House, the redistricting that has occurred, the gerrymandering. Uh, it's partly a, a result of the fact that our country is more polarized and divided today than I've seen it in you know, the last 30 years. Um, and so we, we find ourselves at a point where you know, doing the hard work to find that common ground isn't necessarily rewarded. Uh, I'm way over here. I ran into one of the reporters who follows me frequently, and uh, this, as Jane will tell you, is one of my pet peeves. I said, you know, why don't you come with me? I'm actually getting a warning to do something positive. You know, and of course her reaction was, yeah, right. Uh, front page, you know, uh, she said uh, cynically. Uh, but the point is, um, you know, this does hold people up uh, and forgetting Rob Portman for a minute, just what you're doing, not just with your awards, but every day um, with uh, Marion and Jacob Javits Foundation to try to encourage the kind of successes that Jacob Javits had, um, Civil Rights Act, disabilities. Um, you know, he was involved in the big issues of his time. And, and he was, as Susan said, an intimidating figure. I didn't get to meet him personally. I was in town at that time working for a Congressional Presidential Commission straight out of college, and his reputation was, you know, as somebody tough and smart and, you know, willing to work with both sides to try to find how do you get to a result. I think that is really a definition of patriotism. That's our patriotic duty to try to do that. And it doesn't come hard for Susan or for me because that's why we're in public service, you know, and there's just there's no other way you would do it, right? Uh, but I do think sometimes our system rewards a different type of approach and behavior. And so we need to redouble our efforts that you all are already beginning here with the foundation and have done tonight uh, and will continue to do, I, I know, but we need to spread that to come up with a, a new definition of you know, what it means to be a successful public servant and a patriot. And, and that is to respect one another we have different points of view. I believe uh, at my core that my Democratic colleagues are um, as patriotic as I am and they love their country as much as I do and they want what's best for the country. I believe that as to my Re Republican colleagues as well. Uh, we have different points of view and we have different experiences and we represent different constituencies. But starting with that respect as the foundation, you then can build over time a consensus 
by understanding the other person uh, that we need desperately at this point. Tomorrow in the Senate Commerce Committee, we hope to mark up a legislative initiative which goes to what Susan was talking about earlier on this issue of human trafficking and sex trafficking. And it will be legislation that is two years in the making that has been nonpartisan from the start, not just bipartisan, I would say. And it resolved uh, a, a huge issue. It will resolve a huge issue once it is enacted into law, which I believe it will be, which is to remove an immunity in current law as to these websites that knowingly sell women and children online. Um, but it takes time and work. It's easy to give the speech. It's much harder to find the bipartisan support to get through a sometimes circuitous and challenging legislative process. Navigating that is what we were paid to do by our constituents, what we were hired to do. So my hope is tomorrow you'll see a good bipartisan vote and that particular bill, and I use it just as one example of many, where through hard work and perseverance, even in this, as Susan said, highly charged political environment, um, you can get things done. If you put your head down and focus, as Jake Javits did his entire career, uh, on how to accomplish something for the citizens he represented, the state of New York, and in my case, in the great state of Ohio. So thank you for the honor of allowing me to be here tonight, to be one of your honorees, and um, this only encourages me to recommit myself to uh, that definition of public service and patriotism that leads to results. Thank you. We're romping toward uh, the end of the presentation. We're going to end actually with a very beautiful uh, video that Vice President Biden uh, made uh, in honor of the award, so we're excited about that. But before we do that, I just wanted to take a minute here to tell you a little bit more about why we created this award and a little bit more about my father and mother uh, who really uh, you know, uh, led the foundation and, and you've heard a little bit about my dad. Um, I wanted to start by just thanking uh, Michelle Jolin. Uh, there are partners at uh, Results for America, and I think uh, you know they are actually trying to make sure that government does achieve results for America. <laughs> I think it's kind of relevant, uh, perhaps most relevant tonight. Um, I did want to thank uh, Jeremy, who's with Results for America, who helped to plan this event, Debbie Greif. Uh, our advisor to the foundation, uh, both really helped plan the evening, so thank you. Uh, while my father was a brilliant, insightful man of ideas, he was very much a man of action, uh, and we wanted to honor his legacy. My brother Josh's flash of inspiration led to the Javits Prize for Bipartisan Leadership, which we inaugurated last year at the Javits Center in New York, and there we celebrated in partnership with an terrific organization called Opportunity Nation. Monique Reiser, uh, their leader, is here tonight. And they are really about inspiring young people to participate in civic life, and we celebrated with all the young people in the room that night. The prize is meant to honor the people who do difficult, painstaking work, which you heard about today, required to make progress by exerting the kind of leadership that has made our country a beacon of hope and the envy of the world. And this prize is meant to do exactly what we see today, bring us all together to celebrate what it takes to make progress that benefits the American people, to make that, rather than intransigence, the respected, rewarded gold standard for public service, the definition of patriotism, as we just heard. Last year, we set a high bar, awarding the inaugural Javits Prize to Senator Collins. It would be hard to find a more exemplary and courageous example uh, of a lifetime of bipartisan leadership and their emerging partnership, Senator Scott and Booker. But this evening, uh, we're really thrilled to honor Senator Portman, uh, representatives to get an Upton and Vice President Biden. My father had strong beliefs about the balance between government and private initiative, and he valued justice for people who face prejudice and less than equal opportunity, and he wanted to get things done. This led to a sponsorship of the War Powers Act, asserting the role of Congress in war and peace, programs that provide people with disabilities the opportunity to work, enhanced learning for gifted and talented students, pension security 
historic civil rights protections, legal services to those who could not afford it, support for the arts and humanities, community economic development, medical research, economic investment around the world. His bipartisan approach to leadership resulted in changes that have literally transformed the lives of millions of people. My mother, Marion Javits, who was the president and catalyst of the Javits Foundation, passed away early this year. She was an extraordinary partner to my father, encouraging him, pointing out the urgency of the problems at hand, and bringing together people from business, the arts, science, unions, government, and other spheres in lively, exciting salons and gatherings that were a centerpiece of life in New York and informed my father's work for many years. She also pursued her own interests in the arts, recognizing her advocacy. President Johnson presented her with a pen when he signed legislation establishing the National Endowment for the Arts and Humanities. She served as an advisor to the National Institute of Mental Health and an official U.S. representative to the U.N. Conference on the Status of Women in Mexico. She was fiercely proud of our father and dedicated herself to the foundation he created, providing scholarships and Senate fellowships over the years to hundreds of students, encouraging excellence and commitment to the highest values of public service. She was a glamorous, beautiful woman who did not take no for an answer and was willing to do what was required to get important things done. And we miss her and we honor her today. We wanted to, to uh, end today by with a brief video message from one of this year's uh, winners who could not uh, be with us in person, but I think as the rest of the winners really embodies the values, the character that we're trying to celebrate tonight, former Vice President Joe Biden. I think uh, Bruce Reed, who you met uh, just a moment ago, uh, who was his chief of staff, is going to say a few words about his former boss and introduce the video. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Carla. Uh, as you'll see in a moment, uh, Joe Biden is incredibly proud and grateful to join the pantheon of uh, Senators Collins and Portman, a couple of his favorites, um, and to share this prize with uh, Representative Upton and, and to get, and especially um, it means the world to him to, uh, that this prize is named for one of his heroes. Uh, uh, the, the Vice President has always treasured his early years um, here uh, when uh, giants like Jacob Javits roamed the Senate. Um, and he's never forgotten how much uh, members of both parties uh, looked out for him, um, helped him uh, cope with the loss of his wife and daughter. And uh, he, he came here a young man in a hurry, uh, but Senator Javits uh, showed him how to be a senator of consequence. Uh, he has countless stories, as you can imagine, of lessons from uh, those great leaders. Um, they taught him that serving in Congress is a, is a high privilege. Uh, throughout his eight years in the White House, he never tired of reminding the President and everyone else in the White House uh, that Article I in the Constitution is about the legislative branch, uh, not the executive branch. Uh, he learned never to judge another man's motives, which was a lesson uh, taught to him by uh, many, including Senator, uh, Senate Majority Leader Mansfield, who uh, he came to one time complaining about how Jesse Helms was a heartless ideologue because he was opposing the uh, Americans for Disabilities Act. Uh, and uh, Senator Mansfield uh, explained to him that Senator Helms and his wife had adopted a 14-year-old boy uh, with both legs in braces uh, because they'd seen an ad in the Raleigh newspaper and the boy was just looking for a loving home. Uh, and finally, he learned uh, that members of the Congress are put here for a reason, which is to get things done uh, and to get things done for the American people. And the 21st Century Cures Act is a shining example of that. It means so much to the Biden family, not just because it's a remarkable bipartisan achievement in these uh, divisive times, but also uh, because of how much it will do to help millions and millions of other uh, uh, families around the country. Um, and uh, I uh, have to close with one Biden story. Uh, in his 2007 autobiography, he tells a wonderful story uh, of how he met Jacob Javits. Um, Teddy Kennedy took him to the Senate gym and introduced him to two of Biden's great heroes, uh, Senator Javits uh, and, Sen and Stuart Symington. Um, Biden was mesmerized. Uh, 
The only problem was that both of the senators weren't wearing a stitch of clothing. Uh, <laughs> and Biden wrote that it, it was like one of those, one of those dreams where uh, you wake up and you realize you're not wearing any pants, <laughs> except in this case, your idols weren't wearing any pants. <laughs> so for once in his life, Joe Biden was speechless. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi, folks. It's an honor to be here, and thank you for this recognition. And I, but I most of all want to thank the Javits family, um, Carla, Joy, Joshua. And uh, I only regret that your mom's not here. She was a great friend. I regret uh, that uh, she, did, she was an incredible advocate for keeping uh, your dad's legacy alive. And uh, we traveled a lot together, your mom, your dad, my wife and I. I I'm deeply honored to receive this award named after one of the finest senators I've ever served with. And now I've served with as many senators as anybody in history. I was there 36 years. And I, he had no equal. You know, we were opposite parties, but he took a 32-year-old kid who got elected to the Senate at age 30 under his wing on the Foreign Relations Committee. We traveled together. We uh, were in constant meetings together. And Jack Javits was the person I always looked to, and everybody else did, quite frankly and for the, I'm forever indebted to him. You know, back in those days, your dad uh, thought the Foreign Relations Committee should essentially have a bipartisan staff. We essentially did, that's how it worked. And I, I, I didn't know a single person, staff or senator on that committee, who didn't look to Jack Javits for his brilliance and his insight. He, ha he had this ability to be able to identify the problem and uh, just, just focus in on it. I admired his intellect, I admired his work ethic, and his absolute passion for justice and fairness at home and abroad. At home, he fought for civil rights, and around the world, he fought for human rights because he knew America led by our ideals, not just by our power. And uh, as the late Teddy Kennedy, another great friend of mine, once referred to your dad as, quote, one of the giants of Senate history. And he said, few of us have done as much to make America equal to its dream. Teddy was exactly right. One of, your, one of his greatest legacies was his willingness to work across the aisle to forge a bipartisan consensus. Even after your dad left the Senate, remember he came and acted as staff. Your dad acted as staff in the United States Senate. He sat behind Chuck Percy. Uh, you know, we all know there, there's far too little of uh, that kind of commitment and or that kind of bipartisanship in Washington today. That's why it's so important that all of you are here to, uh, to celebrate what, what we can accomplish when we act together. We put aside our differences and work for our mutual interest. You know, in the closing days of our administration, uh, the conventional wisdom said that passing any major legislation was impossible. It wouldn't have been impossible for Jack Javits. Well, Republicans and Democrats stepped up, including several of the people in this room, and we passed with their leadership the 21st Century Cures Act. During a time of gridlock and intense partisanship, lawmakers from both parties worked together to pass a bill that would provide help and hope for millions of people, delivering significant funding over $6.3 billion to NIH and the National Cancer Institute. So I want to thank Congresswoman DeGette and Congressman Upton uh, for their incredible work in getting the bill passed. And I also want to thank Senator Portman for his Lifetime Achievement Award. And I want to thank uh, the Javits family for establishing a prize that, uh, uh, that is uh, a beacon to encourage lawmakers to work across partisan boundaries to solve the country's most pressing problems. We all know that we're living through a difficult time, but America has been strongly divided before. If you follow Jack Javits' example, we can respect each other, deeply held views, but still find common ground. And most importantly, we can make progress on behalf of the country we all serve. So again, thank you for this great honor. I'm sorry I can't be there with you. All right, I just want to thank you all so much for coming tonight to celebrate, to support this notion that bipartisanship is, you know, can be alive, is alive in the Congress. I hope you'll all go back and speak of what you've seen tonight. Uh, about Senator Portman, the way he conducts himself, about Senator Collins, about 
members of Congress to get an Upton about Vice President Biden, about the fact that there still is that uh, spirit alive and, uh, you know, we need to, we as citizens need to encourage it if we want to see more of that kind of progress uh, on behalf of all of us. So thank you so much for taking the time to be here to celebrate with us tonight. <laughs>